Welcome to Video Oriel CD006, CorelDRAW X5 Basics, creating artwork for a letterhead part 6. Okay, just the finishing touches to the um, artwork before we send it to the printers. Um, open up the uh, previous artwork, part 5, and save a copy, file, save as, part 6. <coughs> there we go. Right, now... One of the things that you often see with letterheads, pre-printed letterheads, is a little mark, an indicator mark, to help the person who's folding the letter and putting it into the envelope do it correctly. If you don't fold it correctly, either it won't fit in the envelope properly, or the address, which sometimes has to fit within a window on the front of the envelope, won't match up correctly. It's very important. So adding a couple of very discreet guides is a good way to, to make sure that people don't make mistakes when they're putting the letter uh, the letter could be fantastic, but it's, if it's been folded up like a chimpanzee's done it, that is going to be reflected in, in, in when, when the person opens the envelope. They're not going to think that much of it. Um, they're not going to think it's very professional. So I'm going to put some guides in. Now I'm going to use the freehand pen tool, or drawing line tool if you like. Uh, just come over to the left-hand edge, and I'm going to use, just click once, Hit the control button to make sure I draw it in a straight line and release. Click to release. Okay. Now I'm going to change the size to 3.5 millimeters. Remember, this is the fixed point. It will adjust the size smaller on the right hand edge. Watch. There we go. Let's just zoom in. Okay. I'm going to change the thickness to 0.5 so it's going to overhang the page there's going to be a line or a mark about 1.5 millimeters in from the left hand edge of the uh, of the letter okay just zoom out now because the letter is folded into three there are two creases the first crease is going to be 99 millimeters from the bottom left hand corner okay so we need to change this dimension again using the transformation docker the position tab or button 99. Now, I need to create one more mark at uh, 198 from the bottom left-hand corner. Okay, so I'm going to create one copy. I'm going to position it at 198 millimeters from the bottom left-hand corner. Hit apply. And if we zoom out, there it is. Done. Okay, so we've got our marks. Just quickly save that. Right, now... I've been having a look at this portion of the uh, page and I'm not that happy with it, if I'm honest. So I'm going to make a few changes. The changes you make might be different. Um, anyway, I'll go ahead. I'm going to change the width to precisely 45. I'm going to make the height 28. I'm going to squish it a little bit. Uh, make sure I've got no copies. It's better. And I'm going to reposition. I think I'm going to reposition it about 6 millimeters in from the left-hand side. Oops. See what happened, I left this on. So undo, reduce it to zero, and move it to six. Okay, I'm then going to move it up. Till it looks kind of about right. Now, I quite like that, so I'm going to just round that up to 277. Okay, that looks about right. I'm happy with that now. It's nice. Okay, so... Just a few little tweaks up in the top left-hand corner. Now, I just want to make a few little tweaks down the bottom here. I noticed in the last video reel that uh, there wasn't a space in between the area code and the telephone number. So I'm just going to use the text tool to come down here and add a space in here. And then just, just remove it. There we go. Put that back. Okay, so... Little change to the text there, added an extra space here to define the area code uh, from the actual fax number. And coming over, the proportions of our little mascot I'm not particularly happy with. Okay, so what I'm going to do is grab him, move him up and out of the way, and I'm just going to drag a guide down and I'm going to re rotate. So if rotate him back so that any, any changes I make will be proportionally in the right. Well, you'll see when I do it. So I'm going to click once, then again twice, and I'm going to rotate it so that it's roughly 
horizontal again. Okay? Then what I'm going to do is arrange, ungroup. I'm going to move his helmet out of the way. Control Z. Now I want to do it so that it doesn't move. It only moves in the horizontal. So I'm hitting control. That's constraining the movement. I've clicked, dragged, and I'm holding the control button, and it's moving it only in the horizontal axis and let go. Okay, now I want to make his smile more smiley. He's not smiling enough. So I'm going to select it, get the shape tool, and I'm going to just click and drag. Click and drag. Perfect. Okay. Now the eye doesn't look very doesn't look right to me. It's not wide enough. So I'm just going to make the eye. Let's go for 3.2. Oops. You see what happened? I want to do it from the center. 3.2. Done. I'm going to make this. Oh, what should I say? Um, again, to make the scale bigger from the center you hit shift while you're dragging click drag okay i'm just going to use the arrow to nudge that down a little bit um, i'm just going to move these up a little bit there we go maybe move his now again the changes you make might be slightly different um, I'm going to make it a bit, a bit bigger. A bit bigger. Oh, that's too much. Let's just go back a notch. Right, zoom out. Needs to come down a bit now. Select it all. Move it down. Okay, now I'm going to move this back. Now I'm going to select the glass. No, actually, there's one more thing. Th this gap here is too big. So I'm going to use the contour to go outside by about a millimetre. That's too much. Edit, undo, contour. I'm going to go 0.5. Arrange, break contour apart. Now, I want to turn this, I'm going to delete this shape and keep this one. The gap's much better now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this object first, the contoured object. Remember, I just broke it apart. Hit shift and select this shape. In fact, no, I will, we'll use the other technique. I want to basically fill this shape here with this color. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use this to get the color, and I'm going to use the paint bucket to fill it. Done. Select that shape, delete it. Now I'm going to just select the, um, the glass helmet, shift, select the eye, align, center, apply, close. Perfect. Okay, he's ready to go back. So just going to select. Or just click, drag, select, group. And I'm going to move him back down. Just into about the right position. I'm going to click again. I'm going to rotate him back. Just so it's right. Just to, oops, control Z. Click again and move. Just use the arrow keys. Now, the only thing I'm not so sure about now is these fingers they need fattening up okay so I'm just gonna make literally make them bigger click drag doesn't have to be precise use the arrow keys as well if you need to it's better much better right that looks like it's done I'll save now a word about the colors now, what I'm going to show you now is how the printer will send your artwork to the printing press or to the printing process, the, uh, the first phase of the printing process. Okay, He's not going to print like he would send it to a, a conventional printer. He's going to print um, separations. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that. File, print, and hopefully explain why we use um, specific colors. Now. You'll notice the issue. It's basically saying that it, the, it doesn't fit on the page size, and that's to do with the printer that we've got on the page size that, that we use. Um, but basically, we've got to go into color, print separations. Okay. Now, it will show you the color separations. Now, you'll see here, these are the, when you break the image down into its constituent colors, you remember we used Pantone, what will happen is 
each one of these colours will be printed on a separate um, as a separate piece of either artwork or um, uh, onto a metal plate, whatever the printing process is, in its in its different colour. And the printing press will print each colour separately. This is why we use Pantone colours, because you can send Pantone 344 and the printer can go and mix Pantone 344. It gets perfect consistent colour, okay? And what it means is that if you go and get some mugs made or some t-shirts printed, because we've used a very specific colour um, with very specific mixes, um, it will be consistent, okay? It's not going to be. It's not going to be a different colour depending on the printing press because we're we're specifying particular inks. Black is black. The guy can just open up a tin of black ink, put it into the printing press, print it. But Pantone 382, 347, and 344 very definite colours, and they can be tested and made perfect. Okay, so that is why I've been using uh, Pantone colour referencing system. So. As long as your artwork has only got these four separations, it's perfect and ready to go to the printers. Um, that's it. There are a couple of additional um, video reels after this one to help you set up the letter or at least export an image that you can use to set up the letter in a word processor. And um, also another video reel to show you how you can convert this into a laser printed artwork um, rather than pre-printed so if you if you can't afford to get some letterheads printed and you just want to or you don't print large enough volumes then you can create some artwork that's that's just fine for working with a with a laser printer okay they are subtly different but like I say in the next two video reels we'll go over those two things um, thank you for watching